what is true will always come to light. That's a great lesson we can learn from the can't stop, won't stop master himself, P. Diddy. So, P. Diddy's going through it. Going through it. I don't know if y'all been reading the news and paying attention to what's going on. But apparently, P. Diddy's um, house, a couple of his houses got raided by the FBI. And uh, they did a whole sting operation, which is major. You're in deep shit. Because, listen, when the feds come to come get you, brother, they don't come to get you on some suspicions. They got hard evidence. They got a lot of freaking blackmail, whatever the hell they got on you. you they got you. They got you. So, P. Diddy is probably shitting bricks right now. And everybody affiliated with P. Diddy should be shitting bricks, too. Because P. Diddy got all the stories, got all the evidence. He's the Black Epstein. We have found the Black Epstein. Listen, this, this, is, a wild, this is a wild story. So, anyway, basically, P. Diddy known as Puff Daddy, known as Daddy from Meek Mill, has been out here just doing some reckless shit for maybe the past two decades. And there's been many, like, rumors circulating about just all the different things, like the suspicious death of his um, mother, Nicole, I think his name is. Uh, Cassidy filed a lawsuit that she made uh, he made her, like, had sex with prostitutes, threatened to kill her. Uh, I think Usher said he almost got his car blown up. There was a bunch of shit, like the suspicious link between him and Tupac's death and Biggie's death. Uh, it just there's a whole lot of shit going on with uh, Mr. Puff Daddy, and apparently the FBI was tracking him down because he has um, links to sex trafficking, so he's he's on that R. Kelly type of shit. Now here's the thing uh, between the difference between him and R. Kelly. R. Kelly, I just think R. Kelly wasn't that intelligent and he wasn't really masterminding things. He was kind of just moving people were enabling, but I think Pete Diddy was probably likely masterminding all this stuff going on. So anyway, the feds came in, they they knocked the doors down, they took his sons out the house, uh, had him out the house. And uh, basically, they were just doing a, a search warrant to see what the hell was going on. And whether there is smoke, there is fire. Uh, if anybody got a chance to listen to Cat Williams' brilliant, brilliant interview on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp, he spoke about all the, the big dick uh, deviants. Yeah, 2024 is going to be very rough for him. And that sounds like most of the rap industry. And if anybody understands the rap industry, it's, it's kind of a degenerate uh, lifestyle and just a degenerate, like, li just life. Because you spend most of your time in the uh, studio smoking weed. You're making music, but there's a lot of hanger on, a lot of alcohol, a lot of strippers. There's a whole lot of shit that's not very productive going on in the rap industry. And furthermore, it's like when there is uh, degenerate behavior going on, it usually only sinks into more degeneracy. Like every logical man kind of comes to the conclusion that you build a family, you, you enjoy your life with your family, you do productive things with the community, you help people out, you be productive, uh, constructive. You enlighten people, you teach people, you educate people, you, you bring new forth new technology, and we all prosper together as a community. That don't sound like what P. Diddy was doing. He sounded like he was flaunting his wealth, and this is really a great lesson to learn for all young men, which is like if you do degenerate behavior, there should be like a repercussion. Usually there's something bad that happens to you. And when you're, not very, when you're young and you don't have a lot of money, a lot of times that degenerate behavior, it usually like makes you crash out and then you have to rebuild and then you learn from the lesson. But when you have a lot of money, it kind of insulates you from your bad choices. And then eventually your degenerate lifestyle gets to the point where your money can no longer shield you. Like it has got out your degenerate behavior and the outcomes and the results of it has superseded the bubble of money that you have. And I think that's where P. Diddy has hit. P. Diddy, uh, he's probably uh, wrong, the wrong list of enemies. And those enemies are now looking to take them down because now they got the evidence. They got the evidence on the boy. Because, listen, like I said, the feds don't come knocking until they know that they got your ass. The feds has like a 99, 98% conviction rate, some shit like that. So, yeah, P. Diddy's going down. Now, the, the real question is, what does that mean for the rap industry and all the icons that are affiliated with this Mr. P. Diddy? Because P. Diddy was known for throwing many, many parties. Many, 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 many parties. And some of the biggest influence from Jay-Z to Beyonce uh uh fat joe <laughs> dj Khaled, like a bunch of dudes were showing up to this dude's party and like 50 cent and cat williams said 50 had a very brilliant story with when 50 was first coming up p diddy's like hey come on 50 let me let me take you shopping baby let me let me get you lined up what you wear and 50 was like hold up bro like nah nigga, i don't want nah, i ain't trying to go shopping nigga. what the fuck you mean going shopping because 50 from the streets he really knows what that means which is like let me come own you let me dress you up and own you. And see, a lot of rappers are starving artists, and they're desperate to get out their situation. So they see a guy like P. Diddy, and he comes on like the nice guy. He's rubbing your, your shoulders. He's telling you you look good. You're going to be a star, baby. You're going to be a star. Dave Chappelle had a brilliant skit, which you can see from behind, 
where he spoke very openly <laughs> and made a little skit about how like crazy a lot of the shit that PDD was having these guys do. And even PDD got mad. He retaliated. Like, fuck you, Dave Chappelle, nigga. Don't be talking about how I be running it. This is bad boys. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> and got mad. But Cat Williams and uh, 50 were talking about this. And they basically spoke on, like, oh, my bad. Probably sorry about that. And basically, PDD spoke about that and basically was telling, like, hey, look, this dude, like, man, he on some weird shit. And I think a lot of you guys had a chance to see it when it with the Meek Mill uh, lately uh, trending. Where they, we got Meek Mill doing all this weird, like, funny shit, like, talking to Diddy, like, oh, what's up, daddy? I'm like, what are you calling this grown man daddy for? And then had the allegations with uh, P. Diddy talking with Justin Bieber when he was, like, 14. Like, why are you a grown man kicking it with Justin Bieber like that? Are you 30, 40, almost years old? you kicking with a 14-year-old. And so there's been a lot of suspicious activity, and the smoke was there. But, like, once again, people have this hero worship when it comes to celebrities for some reason. Like, we, we act like they're not regular people, and... I had to explain to my girl, nigga, the, I don't know what a celebrity is. Like, technically, everybody's a celebrity within some part of their town. Like, you're a celebrity in your family, you're celebrating within your community, your neighborhood, within your city, within the handyman field. Whatever field you're working in, you should be, a, you're kind of a celebrity. So, celebrity is a very uh, subjective meaning. But I look at everybody like you're a man. All men are men walking around this planet. Now, we have different accomplishments, different things that we go and we have status. But the celebrity shit is way overblown, especially for somebody who just makes music. He's not actually, like, bringing true, like, value that keeps people alive. Now, some of you might say, oh, man, the music, he makes me live. When I heard every day, that, right. well, he stole that song for Sting anyway. They said, I was inspired to go basically get a job. Okay, well, nigga, you were never going to make it if a song was inspiring you to get a job. I'm just saying. But what happens is, like, we're, we're starting to see who's going down because there was also some suspicious thing where P. Diddy had a plane, a private plane uh, from his LLC, Air Love, that was flown to like uh, some Puerto Rican island, some some island somewhere, and was able to get out of America and essentially uh, make its way to where it can't be uh, extradited from the states. And my question is, P. Diddy probably got a heads up. Somebody snitched. Somebody uh, gave P. Diddy a heads up. Cause I don't know if he thought it was a sneaky suspicion because he probably would have did it earlier. But he probably tried to get all those tapes because he probably got a whole bunch of tapes because apparently he was on some Epstein shit where it's like he was filming things with people doing shit with minors, and that's probably how they got deals on backroom orders and these parties he was throwing. And Denzel Washington had a pretty famous quote where he says, look, when, uh, always make sure you leave the party before the devil comes. And I think that was the devil. The devil's was P. Diddy's and his um, his entourage bringing motherfuckers in. Because, uh, yeah, there's a lot of guys that are going to be shitting bricks. And I'm I'm very interested, like kind of like with the Epstein thing, is like how deep was it? How many celebs were out here paying to go to P. Diddy's thing because they knew they could have like pedophilia sex or they can watch minors? Or they were doing like uh, prostitution? Like like how how far was it going? Because we thought the R. Kelly thing was deep, but the R. Kelly thing was kind of like just a dumb dumb who was kind of semi-illiterate who was just having sex, doing all the crazy stuff. But this seems like this is way more organized, like an organized crime unit, which would make sense because he ran a label. And the other thing with these these rap labels, man, they be screwing people over. And when, when once again, when you get to degeneracy, the degenerate lifestyle is like it only sinks further. So first you start having just one night stands and then you start having threesomes. Then you start having orgies. And then you start having prostitutes, fucking girls. And then you start having uh crazy, like just BDSM. The next, you know, you start ending up with kids like the Epstein shit. And like, when you think about the log list of how many people went to these parties with P Diddy, cause there is the, the aspect of birds together flock together. These, a lot of these rappers were kicking with Diddy, seen with P Diddy travel with Diddy. And I'm almost positive, like, just from what I know from human interactions, humans don't kick with humans that are not like them. So, like, if I'm an athlete and I train, I work out every day, and I, I'm illiterate, I'm literate, and I, I like to read, study, play piano, I kick with other people who are like-minded, like, like with me. Like, you don't see bulls running around with horses. You don't see eagles flying around with bluebirds. You don't see degenerates kicking it with productive people. So that means they were probably in on the game too. They they knew, like maybe they didn't know how deep it really was, but they probably had a new they probably knew. 
And the more times you kept kicking with Diddy, the more he started to trust you because the more you kick with people, the more you trust them. He started kind of letting things out because they're probably drinking. He's probably drunk one night telling them what's going on, talking to Jay-Z, talking to all these other rappers and these other moguls. And they probably hearing it. And they, they probably got entry. At first they were probably, nah, I'm good. And then eventually you start to get all this money. You begin to develop a, um, a God complex, a superiority complex where you think you're untouchable. Like Diddy said in one of his songs, I'm untouchable. And now he got touched. And I, I'm now, 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 now we get to the dangerous thing is like, is this going to make it to court? Is Diddy going to have a, uh, is he going to be suicided? Like, but Epstein, like, is this too big where all the people who know, they're like, yo, we can't let this get out. Cause if this trial gets out and Pete Diddy makes it cause the stand, he talking. Cause I'm pretty sure guys, kids wrapped up, his trust trapped up, that money, all his empire and everything. Like, the only way to kind of spare, if he, because he's gonna to have to make some deals, because the FBI is gonna to come to like, look, bro, you got three hundred fucking years, no chance of probation. You're, you're done. Now the question is, how how done do you want your family to be? And that's when a man gotta make a choice. Because if somebody tells you, look, you're already finished, you 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 got life, it's done, you're never gonna you're never gonna see the the outside of a prison, but your kids. We're going to take their trust funds. We're taking all that money. Everything needs to go. Restitution, uh, settlements. How far do you want to take it? So if you start talking, because we already got the evidence, tell us what you know. And then it goes to the question, how much does Diddy know? How much does he know? Because now we got a real situation on our hands. Because now you're going to start to see the rap industry crumble. It's going to be done. This might be the final death blow. Like, I thought Sexy Red and Sukiyama was the final death blow. No, this is going to be a death blow of rap. This is what's going to be the thing that puts rap in the fucking grave and never comes back. Because this is going to go down in history. Like, 20 years? He, he has had at least 20 years of just dirt on everybody. And he's squilling. I believe that. I, trust me on that one. P. Diddy is squilling. And I just want to hear what, what, what the pig got to say. But I appreciate you guys for listening. I'm, I'm going to stay tuned to this one. This is riveting, riveting, riveting content. Because, man, you can't, you can't write a better story than this one.